Good morning. Welcome to Victorious Faith. I'm Cherry Campbell. Now we have begun studying the spiritual laws of the kingdom of God. And yesterday we introduced what is a law. By definition, a law is something that is constant. It is constant. And so that means it works all the time for everyone, everywhere. Let me say that again. A law is something that works all the time for everyone, everywhere. Now that's good news because then we can see that we can get an answer to prayer on Tuesdays, the same as we can get answers to prayer on Sundays, because the spiritual laws are always working. And that also means that if we learn to use the spiritual laws, just like God uses them, we can get the same results that God gets. Now, of course, God is perfect and perfectly developed in using these spiritual laws. And so he gets perfect results every time you and me, we're learning. We are just learning what they are. As someone said once, we're like Ned in the first reader. We're learning what they are and learning, beginning to learn how they operate. But your success in getting results to your prayers will come and will increase as you get practice in using the spiritual laws of the kingdom, as you develop in using the spiritual laws of the kingdom. So as we said before, just like when you want to, if you want to become a doctor or a lawyer or anything else, even someone coming from another country, you will have to get education and training. We all need Bible education and Bible training. And that means we need to learn and study the word of God to find out what are the spiritual laws and how do they operate. But not only do we get the book learning, we need to put it in practice in our lives every day, morning till night. And as we practice them, we get more skillful. We get more developed in using them. And the more developed we become, the better results we will get. The more skillful we become, the greater the victories we get, the more frequent we get answers to our prayers, the more, um, just in every way, we'll, we will more prosperous, more successful, more victorious in our life. The more that we get skillful in using the spiritual laws of the kingdom of God. Hallelujah. Now, as I was saying, as we closed yesterday, that many Christians are getting what I call faith accidents, meaning they get answers to their prayers some of the time, but not all the time. And when they get results some of the time, that's what I call a faith accident because they didn't know exactly what they did that got that result, that got the answer to prayer, that got their healing, that got their need met, that got their victory. They didn't know what it was that they did to get that result. So the next time they had a need, they didn't know how to repeat it. For example, sometimes this is kind of funny, but we're in church and we're singing a beautiful worship chorus and somebody gets healed. Well, then the next time they need a healing, they might try to sing that same worship chorus again. Well, it wasn't the worship chorus that healed them. It was the fact that while they sang that worship chorus, they were activating the spiritual laws. But they're going to try to sing that same song again to see if that song would bring healing to them. 
it's not the song that will heal you. Sometimes people might get an answer to prayer because of crying and wailing. Well, it's not the crying and the wailing that will bring your answer. It is activating the spiritual laws that will bring your answer. So we need to learn what are the ways of God. And then as we do them, we can consistently get results. That means you can get your answer to prayer today, tomorrow, and every day for the rest of your life. It removes the guesswork out of praying when you know the spiritual laws. So many Christians are praying by guesswork. They're hoping they're praying the right thing the right way, but they don't know for sure. And sometimes they get results and sometimes they don't. But understanding the spiritual laws, knowing what they are and how they work, you can start using them purposely and intentionally, and it will remove the guesswork out of your praying and believing so that you can get results every time. Every time it will work because that's what a spiritual law is. Hallelujah. And one more time, let me just read to you or give to you a list of what I consider to be seven primary spiritual laws. Now, these are not all the spiritual laws. Of course, there are many other things that are involved, but I consider these to be primary, to be foundational. Just like primary colors, you know, when we learned about the colors, red, blue, and yellow are primary colors, but when you mix them in different ways, you get other colors. So you mix blue and yellow, you get green, you get, you mix red and yellow and you get orange, you mix blue and red and you get purple. And so you get others out of those, but those are the primary. Well, in the same way, I look at these as primary laws because attached to each one of these laws, there can be other laws, but these are the primary ones foundational ones. And if we get a hold of these, then, and we are going to study each of these as a subject. Each one is a major subject of study. And we will start see how they are working, how they work and how they operate. So let me just name them for you again. And they are all interrelated and interdependent. They all work with one another. And this is why if we understand these laws and particularly what I consider these seven laws, primary laws, if you're not getting an answer to your prayer, check yourself in these seven areas to see if it's one of these spiritual laws that you are not operating in correctly because a lack of receiving answers to prayer, not receiving answers to prayer or getting victories or results will usually always be connected to the lack of operating in one of these spiritual laws. So again, let me give you, the list of seven primary laws. One, the law of love, the law of love Two, the law of faith, the law of faith. Three, the law of the creative power of words, the law of the creative power of words Four, the law of sowing and reaping, the law of sowing and reaping. Five, the law of authority and dominion to rule in the name of Jesus. 
the law of authority and dominion to rule in the name of Jesus. Six, the law of wisdom or the law of the wisdom of God. Wisdom operating in God's wisdom. Seven, the law of obedience, the law of obedience. Now, each one of these we will be taking as a subject. But like I said, if you have not received an answer to your prayer, you need to check yourself in each one of these seven laws to see if it's one of these. And usually it is one of these that we are not operating in correctly or fully. And that is the reason why we are not receiving. Now, of course, connected, for example, connected to the law of faith would be patience. Faith and patience work together. And sometimes it's just simply a matter of patience to receive. However, many times Christians are just putting in practice patience when it's not patience that's needed. It's one of these other laws that's needed. Or, for example, connected to the law of love is also the law of humility or the law of of peace and joy and gentleness and goodness. And so we see that other laws will be connected to these seven laws. And so this is like a checklist for us that we will need to look at to see Are we walking in these laws? Are we operating in these laws? And it's usually the lack of one or more of these laws and using them correctly. That is the reason why we have not yet received the answer to our prayers. Now, let us begin by studying the law of faith. The law of of faith. Faith is a spiritual law. In Romans 3:27, in the King James version it says, "By what law? Of works? No, but by the law of faith." By the law of faith. So we see here that faith is called a law, a spiritual law. So we're going to study faith. What is faith and how does it operate? First of all, I want to point out several reasons why we need to have faith. Why do we need to have faith? Well, for one reason, the Bible says the just shall live by faith. Now, in Romans 1.17, the just shall live by faith. Also, Galatians 3.11, the just shall live by faith. Also, Hebrews 10.38, the just shall live by faith. And Habakkuk 2.4, the just shall live by his faith. Now, you know, if God says something, it's important. If he says it twice... It's very important. If he says it three times or four times, it is very, very important. Now, God said this four times in the Bible. Romans 117, Galatians 311, Hebrews 1038 and Habakkuk 24. It says the just or that is the righteous shall live by faith. Now, what does it mean? Live by faith. Well, how do you live? It means that everything you do is by faith. That means you wake up in the morning by faith. You eat breakfast by faith. You drive to work or go to school by faith. You pay your bills by faith. Everything you say is by faith. Everything you do is by faith. The way you live is the way you do everything. And God said, 
that the righteous or the just shall live by faith. That means everything we do, we must do it by faith. Well, why else do we have faith? Well, we receive grace by faith. And someday we'll take a, another study of grace. Romans 5, 2 says, through whom we have gained access by faith into this grace. We have access by faith into this grace in which we now stand. Also, Hebrews 4, 16 says, let us then a- approach the throne of grace with confidence. That word confidence is another word for faith. So we receive grace by faith. If you, we all need grace and we need more grace. How are we going to get it? By faith. If you need grace today, you will receive it by faith. Also, third, we are saved by faith. Ephesians 2, 8 says, for it is by grace you have been saved through faith. So we are saved through faith. Also, we are free from sin by faith. For that, you can read the whole chapter of Romans chapter 6. It says all through the chapter, you have been set free from sin. Yes, you are free from sin. If you think you're still in bondage to sin, then you just need to get saved. You need to get born again. Because when you get born again, you are no longer a slave to sin. As it says in Romans 6, no longer a slave to sin. You are set free from sin. The power of sin is broken. The authority of sin is broken off of your life. You need to receive that freedom by faith so that by faith, you say, I am free from sin. Everybody say that right now. I am free from sin. Amen. You will live continually free from sin by faith. Also, another thing we need by we receive by faith, we are justified. That means justified means made righteous or made right with God by faith. Romans 5 1 says, therefore, since we have been justified through faith, we have peace with God through our Lord Jesus Christ. We have been justified through faith. Also, Galatians 2.16 says, Know that a man is not justified by observing the law, but by faith in Jesus Christ. So we too have put our faith in Christ Jesus that we may be justified by faith in Christ. So we are made righteous by faith. If you are feeling guilty and guilt consciousness, You need to realize you are justified by faith. Also, right with that, justified means made righteous. We receive righteousness by faith. Romans 117 says, for in the gospel, a righteousness from God is revealed, a righteousness that is by faith. From first to last. So every day you receive freedom from sin consciousness, guilt and condemnation, and you receive your robe of righteousness. You are the righteousness of God in Christ Jesus. How? By faith. By faith. Romans 4, 3 says, Abraham believed God and it was credited to him as righteousness. So you are made righteous by believing God. Romans 4.13 says, through the righteousness that comes by faith. Righteousness comes by faith. And again, in Romans 9.30, it says a righteousness that is by faith. So you are going to be free from sin, consciousness, guilt, and condemnation when you put your faith in God. And as I had done a lesson on this on righteousness earlier, you can check back in August. If you want to go to the website, go to the radio broadcast archives. And in August, we taught a lesson on righteousness. And righteousness is simply being 
made right with God and being free from a sin consciousness, which is a guilt consciousness or condemnation. If you've got sin in your past or something wrong that you did, mistakes that you made, and you are feeling beat up mentally, condemned, feeling guilty because of those past sins and failures and mistakes, then you need to receive your righteousness by faith in Christ Jesus. And as we studied in August in Romans, it also says by faith in his blood. It is through faith in his blood, believing that the blood of Jesus cleanses you from all unrighteousness. Yes, that's what God's word says. His blood cleanses you from all unrighteousness. And so you receive that through faith, through faith in his blood, the cleansing power of his blood, the washing power of his blood, the redeeming power of his blood. As the Lord said to me now many years ago, as I was feeling condemnation, the Lord spoke to my heart and said, you have more faith in the power of your sin than you have faith in the power of my blood to cleanse your sin. You must put faith in my blood that cleanses you from all sin and unrighteousness. You see, the blood of God, uh, the blood of Jesus cleanses you from all unrighteousness. It cleanses you and makes you whiter than snow. You must simply have faith in his blood and say, I am clean. I am clean. I am washed in the blood. Jesus, I ask for the cleansing power of your blood to wash over me. Wash my heart. Wash my mind. Wash my eyes. Wash my ears. Wash my lips. Cleanse me from all unrighteousness. Cleanse me from all guilt and condemnation. And now I receive and I put on, as I would put on a shirt in the morning, I put on your robe of righteousness and I am clothed in your righteousness, I am clean and I am free from sin right now in Jesus name. Amen. Now we need to do that every day because the devil will try to keep beating you up by guilt and condemnation. And then another reason why we need faith is that we draw near to God by faith. Ephesians three twelve says through faith, we approach God through faith. We approach God with freedom and confidence. And you know, that's something else about condemnation and sin consciousness, awareness of your sins and failures. They will keep you from drawing near to God. They will become a stumbling block to you. They will become a wall to you keeping you from feeling like you can enter into God's holy presence because God is holy. But if you will receive your cleansing through his blood, remember we enter through the blood of the lamb. We enter his presence through the blood of Jesus Christ, the lamb that was slain for our sins. And if we come to him by the blood, you say, Lord, I don't come by my own righteousness or my own works because they are as filthy rags, but I come by and through the work of Jesus Christ, the lamb of God that was slain for me. I enter by the blood of the lamb. I enter the most holy place by the blood of the lamb. I enter your presence by his blood. His blood cleanses me from all unrighteousness. And through his blood, you draw near to God in full assurance of faith, as it says in Hebrews chapter 9 and 10. Praise God. So through faith, we approach God with freedom and confidence. In Hebrews ten twenty two, it says, let us draw near to God with a sincere heart in full assurance of faith assurance of faith, your faith in him, your faith in his blood gives you assurance and confidence to come boldly to the throne 
of God and the throne of grace. Come to him right now and receive from him. Let's pray. Father, I thank you for the power of your blood that cleanses us from all sin and all unrighteousness. And through your blood, we can come boldly to the throne of grace. Through your blood, we have access to you. Through your blood, we draw near to you. Through your blood, we approach you in full assurance of faith. And we say, Lord, we just hold up the blood of Jesus. We come in your blood and we receive from you today, as your word says in Hebrews 4, 16, we approach the throne of grace, God's benevolence with confidence and faith so that we may receive, receive everything we need, receive mercy and find grace to help us in our time of need. Lord, today we draw near to you in full assurance of faith and we receive from you everything we need right now. And I pray for those listening that whatever they need, healing, finances, family restoration, or jobs, or anything else, that your word is working in their lives. Your spirit is working in them and they receive it today by faith. We thank you, Father, for it and give you glory and honor and praise in Jesus' name. Amen. Now, thank you for joining me today and join me again tomorrow as we continue to study the law of faith. God bless you. Remember, God loves you. You are highly blessed. You are blessed and highly favored by the Lord.